this is back on our theme of um, just math, right? Remember how we talked about David's little comment about everything's just math? Well, he's right. So I've been doing some studying of lots of stuff over the last year, but especially this thing that a beer brings up a lot. So it's my job to take those things and analyze them. And I think you're going to find this pretty interesting. I'm going to walk you through this in a second. So let's just stay on a hypothetical example. Let's say that we have a stock at $100 a share and that we do the 97 strike of that stock. We get $4 when we sell it. Three of those dollars are in the money and $1 is juice, right? So we're, you know, the stock's at $100 a share, the 97 strike, three of that means in the money by definition, the rest of it is juice, right? So we make 1% if we sell that one. So there's four scenarios. The, the stock stays the same. That's our base case, right? We always have to assume that, you know, our stock stays the same or goes up a little bit, but let's go with that. We spend $100, we get back four, and then at the end of this, we get back 97 because we get back our strike. We don't get anything over the strike. We make a dollar, right? When you net all that out. Scenario two, the stock goes up $10, right? Goes up 10% in the week. Pretty rare, but let's say we got lucky. Well, we make the same amount of money. We spent $100, we got back four, then we got back 97 because we don't get anything over our strike and we make a dollar value increase. Scenario three, the stock goes down 4% for the week. Well, it goes down. We spent $100, got back four, but we only got back 96 um, instead of 97, right? So we, we made nothing for the week, just in the short term. And then the fourth scenario is that the stock declines to 90, right? Goes down 10% in the week. So we spent 100, got back four, but only get back 90 in our value. And so we've lost $6 for the week. Net, net, we still got the dollar, but the stock went down, um, a, you know, an extra $7, right? So those are the four scenarios that I look like, I look at, right? So that's kind of, that's kind of the way we like it to happen. There's, you know, pretty good chance that it's not going to go down more than 4%. Pretty good chance it's not going to go up 10%. It's pretty good chance it's not going to go down 10%. So it's either going to not go down 4% or stay roughly the same. As long as it stays over 97, we lock in a 1% gain for the week. We all understand that, right? You guys, I'm just going over this to review it, but I know you understand it. Now I wanna show you the chart of Apple because this is interesting to me. And some of you guys are in Apple, so I thought you'd like it too. Apple in three years has only had eight downtrends of more than four weeks, okay? And I marked them with the little red arrows. Only eight downtrends of more than four weeks. I thought that was interesting. Out of 150 something weeks, um, it's only had a few of those. Um, Apple declined greater than 4% on 21 of the 156 weeks in the three-year period. And I'm not counting, there's two earnings weeks in there where it went down more than 4%. So most weeks, the stock didn't go down more than 4%. The stock increased 79% during the three-year period. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that's a good stock. That's the one we want to be in. And the math is that the juice collected, if we're getting 1% a year, let's say, right? We're getting a dollar a year. Um, we're going to make, you know, 48% a year, just rounding that off, okay? But I'm going to show you the real, the real numbers in a second. So if you just make 1% a year, that's 48% or 1% a week, you make 48% a year because you're not in those four weeks when there's earnings. And if you do that three years in a row, uh, it's 144% roughly, okay? Just call it that we get a buck. Okay, now let's look at some interesting stuff. So I ran this, this study. Now, you don't have to understand it. I'm going to give you a summary in a second. So let's look at this. This is the summary. And each of those green lines is the end of each year. So at the end of the first year, uh, the net bucket, the, the working capital went up by 5196. Our account value went to 183. Remember, we started at 73, and now the account value is up 183 because we've added so much juice and some in the money amount too when it went down. Then at the end of 2021, the net bucket, the account value is 299 because the stock went way up. We were getting a little bit more juice, but you know we, it went way up. And then our net bucket also went up as well. And then um, the third year, uh, the account value is now 333.80, and our net bucket has a 200. $204.19 in it. So we've made some good money in our net bucket, 
from the juice, but it's all part of the account value. We can't really, I mean, it's just working capital, but it's part of the whole, it's part of the whole net worth calculation. So I just found this to be really interesting because we don't want to make our decisions based on those eight weeks, or what did I say, 21 weeks that the stock went down more than 4% and we're rolling down and trying to catch it and doing the rule and limiting our upside and all those kinds of things. If we have a good stock and we look at it long-term, at the end of that period of time, even though the stock really only went from 73.45 to what it is today at 131.38 or whatever, 129.61, it's roughly that today, isn't it? So, or at the end of the year, it was 129.61, whatever. It's, it only went up 78%, but look how much more money we actually made because we got the juice. So I find that really interesting. I'm going to do a few more of these. You know, I think Tesla is going to be really telling because we're at the end of the bottom of that, of a 72% decline. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting when I run that one, but I just, I just spent a lot of time building this spreadsheet for Apple. And I thought the, um, the, the results were pretty interesting. So what are the conclusions? Keep a long-term view. I say this all the time. Believe in your stock, because if you believe in it, you don't bail on it. You still collect the juice. It's going to go up and it's going to go down. Nothing goes straight up or straight down. The juice will set you free. Remember that. Little tiny high probability win wins lead to success. So, all right. That's what I got to say about all that. <laughs>